So OpenAI is facing incredible backlash after a leaked letter reveals different intentions than the public statements. So let's actually talk about what started it all because this didn't start yesterday and it's been an ongoing story for the past couple of days. A few days ago, OpenAI's CFO Sarah Fryer said that the company wants a federal guarantee to make it easier to finance massive investments in AI chips for data centers. Now, this was said in an interview with the Wall Street Journal, and this was one of the first times that we started to see somewhat of a public backlash. If you aren't sure why people wouldn't want this initially, it's because OpenAI is a private company. And because they're a private company, most people do not want to, you know, foot the bill if OpenAI spends excessively on compute and other expenses that simply don't make sense. Most people don't see a need to bail out OpenAI when they could realistically build their company in a way that doesn't earn $1.4 trillion in cash. There was a lot of backlash from this simple interview clip. Now, I would show you the interview clip, but it is copyrighted. And of course, I want this video to stay up. So the backlash got so bad that what we actually had over the next day was we actually had Sarah Fryer decide to clarify the comments that she made on the same day. So you can see that she said, I'd like to clarify my comments earlier today. OpenAI is not seeking a government backstop for our infrastructure commitments. I used the word backstop and it muddied the point. As the full clip of my answer shows, I was making the point that American strength in technology will come from building real industrial capacity, which requires the private sector and the government playing their part. As I said, the United government has been incredibly forward leaning and has understood that AI is a national strategic asset. Now, whilst this statement did backtrack a little bit and it did clarify what OpenAI kind of meant in that statement, it still wasn't enough to remove some of the continued backlash that we've seen. For example, there was this tweet that got over a million impressions, 50,000 likes, nearly 10,000 retweets. And this is because of course, the narrative started to spread that OpenAI was essentially asking for a government bailout. You can see this person said, so they inflated a bubble by selling undelivered services to each other. And now they're demanding taxpayer money or they'll crash the economy. This is extortion or intentional manipulation. Now, the tweet they're referring to is this one. This is the tweet that once again is causing a lot more backlash for OpenAI. It says OpenAI seeks government spending slash backing to boost AI investments. I'm not sure which website this is from, but it's super interesting because it gets into all of the details. It talks about the fact that, you know, they are looking for the US government to provide loan guarantees for its massive infrastructure expansion that will eventually cost more than $1 trillion. And that's what Sarah Fry was saying in the Wall Street Journal business interview. She said that federal loan guarantees would really drop the cost of financing, she explained, enabling OpenAI and its investors to borrow more money at lower rates to meet the company's ambitious targets. The proposal is quite unusual for a Silicon Valley giant and would theoretically reduce OpenAI's borrowing costs since the government would absorb the losses if the company defaulted. And such guarantees would also dramatically expand OpenAI's lender pool as many banks and financial institutions face strict limits on high lending. Now, of course, this is coming as OpenAI's, you know, spending spree on computing infrastructure. And most people right now have sort of shifted their opinion on OpenAI to start to question how on earth are they going to pay for the $1.4 trillion in spending commitments that they have until 2030. Once again, it got so bad, there was literally entire Twitter discourse of people blaming OpenAI. There were a lot of tweets. If you were on Twitter, you didn't miss this. And Sam Altman had to clarify exactly what was going on. Now, remember, I'm going to get to the letter bit in a moment, but it's crazy because I'm giving you guys the backstory on why this letter came out. So Sam Altman said, the government has played a critical role in our infrastructure builds. Our public submission posted on our blog shares our thinking and suggests for how the United States government can support domestic supply chain manufacturing. This is a very thin line with everything we have heard from the government about their priorities. We think United States reindustrialization across the entire stack, fabs, turbines, transformers, steel and more will help everyone in our industry and other industries, including us. To the degree, the government wants to do something to ensure a domestic supply chain. Great. This is part of national policy that makes sense to me. But that's super different than loan guarantees to open AI. And we hope that's clear. So essentially he's trying to say, hey, look, we don't really want government support. It would be kind of good if we got it. But here's the problem. 
there was an actual letter that was written to the United States government that somewhat contradicts most of the statements coming from OpenAI. And this is where there is public disconnect and there is a lot of distrust from individuals who are basically saying that, look, you're saying one thing in public, but behind closed doors, you and the government are trying to work out something else. So this is what we you know, see from More Perfect Union. It says OpenAI is scrambling to say that they don't want or need a bailout. But just 10 days ago, they sent a letter to the White House asking for things, including loan guarantees. And the company also wants the government to deploy grants, cost sharing agreements, loans and more. So when this was surfaced and it started to do the rounds on Twitter, people were like, wait a minute, that's crazy. You guys said that, you know, you don't want any going guarantees. You're backtracking on your statements. And then suddenly we find this letter that you sent to the US government that was, you know, including things such as those very loan guarantees. So this is the letter here. It covers quite a lot. They sent it to the White House Office of Science and Technology, the OSTP, urging the United States government to act quickly to secure America's leadership by closing the electron gap with China, essentially boosting national energy generation and infrastructure to power AI data centers. Now, this letter does go into a lot of things, but this is the point that most people are paying attention to. We can see right here that this is where you can see AI server production and AI data centers. Broadening coverage of the AMIC will lower the effective cost of capital, de-risk early investment, and unlock private capital to help alleviate bottlenecks and accelerate AI builds in the United States. Counter the PRC by de-risking United States manufacturing expansion to provide manufacturers with the certainty and capital they need to scale production quickly. The federal government should also deploy grants, cost sharing agreements, loans, or loan guarantees to expand industrial base capacity and resilience, which, and essentially they're saying, look, to counter the foreign nations, we need to ensure that the government is in on us with this. And I kind of get what they are saying. You do not want to, you know, fall behind because of course it is pretty awful if you fall behind in the AI race and other nations become the leaders in the space, they're going to have a tremendous advantage. But I do think there is a fine line, like Sam Altman said, between having, you know, federal loan guarantees and actually just having the United States support traditional AI infrastructure. Now, of course, we then got the AI czar, Sachs, saying that there will be no federal bailout for AI after the CFO's comments. So David Sachs actually said there will be no federal bailout for artificial intelligence. Sachs is the president Donald Trump's artificial intelligence and crypto czar. And his comments came after Sarah Fryer mentioned, a, you know, a backstop during a conference. Now, I do believe that even if they say this, they are going to bail out these companies because at this point, I believe that these companies are too big to fail. If you, you know, want to understand why I hold this position, we can take a look at this picture. And essentially, this is why a lot of people are calling for OpenAI to, you know, sort of being taken a look at because most people are basically saying that, look, OpenAI is a company that is essentially, well, not even just OpenAI, but the entire AI industry at the moment are just sending money to each other to basically prop up the entire AI money machine slash AI economy. I mean, it's like, you know, Nvidia invests in OpenAI, OpenAI buys chips from them, Nvidia's revenue goes up, their valuation goes up, their stock goes up, they use that stock to buy more in OpenAI and the circle just completes. You know, it's pretty crazy how circular the entire thing is. I mean, OpenAI is linked to AMD, they're linked to Nvidia, linked to a billion dollar deal with Oracle, they're linked to Microsoft. And most people are starting to wonder are OpenAI becoming too big to fail? Essentially saying that, look, if OpenAI fails, does it take the United States and the rest of the AI industry along with it? I personally hold the position that at this current point, maybe not, but consider the fact that they've signed super big deals with AMD, Nvidia, Amazon, Oracle. Those are the, you know, basically the top 10 companies in the world, top 20 companies among the Mag7, those kind of companies. It's pretty, pretty hard to see the government allowing OpenAI to fail even if there are other AI organizations in there. Now, of course, like I said, Sam Altman decided to come on and clarify things. So he said, the first is the obvious one. We do not have or want government guarantees for open AI data centers. We believe that governments should not pick winners or losers and that the taxpayers should not bail out companies that make bad, bad business decisions or otherwise lose in the market. If one company fails, other companies will do good work. And so he answers basically three questions that most people are going to have. How on earth are OpenAI going to pay for $1.4 trillion of commitments? And I honestly don't have an answer for this. Even as someone looking to all of this, even looking at Sam Altman's statement here, 
it still is very confusing on how they are going to pay for $1.4 trillion of commitments. And they, this, I'm just going to give you their reasoning, okay? Because they say that we expect to end this year above $20 billion in analyzed revenue, grow to hundreds of billion by 2030, and we are looking at commitments of $1.4 trillion over the next eight years. Obviously, this requires continued revenue growth, and each doubling is a lot of work, but we are feeling good about our prospects there, and we are quite excited about our upcoming enterprise offering, for example, and there are categories like new consumer devices and robotics that we also expect to be very significant. But there are also new categories that we have a hard time putting specifics on, like AI that can do scientific discovery, which we will touch on later. And we're looking at ways that we can directly sell compute capacities to other companies. And we're pretty sure the world is going to need a lot of AI cloud, and we are excited to offer this. We may raise more equity or debt capital in the future. But everything we currently see suggests that the world is going to need a great deal more computing power than what we are already planning for. So essentially, OpenAI are basically saying that, look, we are going to commit to all of this infrastructure now rather than wait later. Now, another question that, um, you know, they have here is, is OpenAI becoming too big to fail? And should the government pick winners and losers? They respond by saying, look, our answer on this is an unequivocal no. If we screw up and we can't fix it, we should fail. And other companies will continue doing good work and servicing customers. That's how capitalism works. And that's how the economy and ecosystem would be fine. We plan to be a wildly successful company, but if we get it wrong, that's on us. And they're referenced in the statement. Our CFO talked about government financing yesterday and then later clarified her point, underscoring that she should have phrased things more clearly. And as mentioned above, we think the United States government should have a national strategy for its own AI infrastructure. So why so much now? Why are they spending so much now? Remember the 1.4 trillion that we just discussed? They essentially say that, look, we're trying to build the AI infrastructure for a future economy powered by AI. And given everything we've seen on the horizon in the research program, this is the time to invest to be really scaling up our technology. Massive infrastructure projects take quite a while to build, so we have to start now. And based on the trends that we are seeing of how people use AI and how much of it they would like to use, we believe the risk to OpenAI is not having enough computing power. It's more significant and more likely than risk of having too much. Even today, we and others have to rate limit our products and not offer new features and models because we face such a severe compute constraint. And in a world where AI can make important scientific breakthroughs, but at the cost of tremendous amounts of computing power, we want to be ready to meet that moment. And we no longer think it's in the distant future. And our mission requires us to do what we can to not wait any more years to apply AI to hard problems like contributing to curing deadly disease and to bring the benefits of AGI to people as soon as possible. So with that being said, let me know your opinions. I think OpenAI is always in some sort of drama and this is no ordinary. I'm 50-50 on this. I think, yes, OpenAI shouldn't have some government bailout. But at the same time, I do believe that it is vital that the United States stay ahead in the AI race.